Thank you for joining us. This is live with Miami's Community News, and our guests today are Dr. Marta Perez, school board member, and our honored and esteemed guest, uh, Dr. Lauren Shapiro. Thank you very much for being here, Dr. Shapiro. You're very welcome. The issue facing most of us across the world, and specifically for us here in Miami-Dade County, is stress that's occurring during this COVID mm -hmm. pandemic. And one of the things that we're so happy is that uh, uh, Michelle Obama said the other day, among other things, she has a low-grade depression. That was so wonderful mm -hmm. to hear a public person bring that out because mm -hmm. that made me feel better. Okay. We all want to feel better. So, Marta, this is your show, so let's go. Thank you so much, Michael. We know what to do for the pandemic for our physical health. We know to wear masks. We know about sanitizers. We know about social distancing. But it is equally important to know what to do for our mental health. And we are so honored in South Florida to have such a distinguished uh, mental health professional, Dr. Lawrence Shapiro, who is, uh, has agreed to be with us today. Uh, just to give you a little background about Dr. Shapiro, he's an internationally known psychologist uh, who has written more than 75 books developed more than 100 therapeutic games, and has his work has been published in 28 languages. Among his many books, he has written this workbook uh, currently, which he will talk about in one second, which is called Taking Care of Your Mental Health During the COVID-19 Pandemic. And not only that, He's a major altruist and an all-around good guy, a nice person, and we are honored to have you here, Dr. Lawrence Shapiro. Well, thank you very much. I'm delighted to be here. And uh, we do have a mental health crisis, just like we have a health crisis. Uh, it's not a new crisis. We, we've been struggling with mental health issues for uh, many, many years for adults. Uh, again, pe famous people like Michelle Obama, and ordinary people like most of us, uh, and for kids as well. So uh, what the pandemic has done is it's magnified problems that all already existed. Uh, it's triggered symptoms that people have, uh, but it's also given us an opportunity to look at how do we address uh, problems in the family, how do we address individual problems, and most of all, how do we help kids deal with the anxiety that's affecting all of us and then flourish just as we hope all our kids will do. Yeah, I, I, there was a couple things I wanted to make sure everybody knows. There's glass between us. We came in, we took everybody's temperature. We have a couple people in the audience here. Everybody got a tag here, meaning that we did the tests and we, and we have um, glass here and plastic over there. So some of you may see a little uh, <laughs> uh, uh, um, uh, reflection. I do want to ask everybody if you would please share this and make some comments if you like. And if you would make sure you ask people to do that. And if some of you can do your own watch party, that would be great so we can share the, this news uh, with, with other people. The, the mission of this program is excellence in education. And we hope that parents and teachers all are able to absorb the, the wonderful information that Dr. Shapiro is going to share with us. So I'd like to ask Dr. Shapiro, within that mission, what are five things that you would tell parents they need to do uh, when, they, uh, when they are uh, addressing emotional problems for their children during the pandemic? Well, um, the pandemic has given us an opportunity to be even better parents. We all love our kids, uh, but we have to do things that may be a little difficult, uh, we, particularly because the kids are home for, for many of us. Uh, and for uh, a lot of time. Uh, so the first thing is, is, of course, to have structure. Uh, kids thrive on structure and, and predictability. Uh, and that in structure includes bedtimes, mealtimes, uh, rules, um, and you know, predictability, I guess, is, is the main factor. Uh, we know that mental health I is, like physical health, uh, a biochemical reaction. So when you get enough sleep, you have more serotonin. Serotonin is a uh, neural peptide that helps us feel calm and gives us a sense of well-being. When you eat right, you have more serotonin as opposed to a lot of junk food and sugar, which brings us the wrong kind of chemicals. When you exercise, you have endorphins and serotonin and dopamine. 
Uh, so these are obviously basic premises that parents need to keep in mind. What we do with our kids on a daily basis affects the, the brain and then affects their mental health. Uh, beyond that, uh, we need to communicate. We n and by communicate, I mean talk to our kids, not just about you know, what the, the uh, iPad is, uh, where the, uh, is the iPad or take out the trash, but we <laughs> want to talk to our kids about their feelings. And we want to do this really on a daily basis. Um, you know, and listen, obviously talking, listening. We want e the idea of emotional intelligence, which is what I preach for uh, all families and all kids, is about learning to talk and learning to listen. Uh, and then finally, it's modeling. You know, when we think about how do our kids learn uh, to handle stress, to handle anger, to express themselves, well, first of all, they look at us as parents. And uh, if you have a problem and all you do is, you know, scream at your husband or, uh, or get depressed or uh, maybe take a drink, well, that's we're teaching our kids to not avo to avoid our pro their problems rather than to solve them. So you want to have a, a problem-solving approach, you want to have a positive attitude, and you want to give your kids the, the role models to be the kind of people you want them to be. Uh, and Dr. Shapiro, when you talk about modeling, this is very important because uh, so often uh, we have bad days, uh, we, and, and our, stud our children are, are little um, sponges. They're absorbing everything that's happening in their homes. So when, when you talk about modeling, you also talk about teaching children how to problem solve uh, by, by modeling that. How do you model problem solving for a child when you talk to them? Well, you, you, you think aloud. So if, if you have a hard day and, uh, you know, your computer's not working and you missed your Zoom meeting and uh, maybe you've got a headache, uh, it, it, you talk about the problem, but you talk about the solution to that problem. You know, for example, uh, if you have a hard day, well, you can take some time to uh, relax or, or to meditate or to listen to some calm music. Uh, if you have uh, someone that's angry at you, you can say, listen, I, they're, my boss is really angry. They were, they were having a hard day. So we just sat down, we talked about it, uh, and I listened to them and they listened to me. So these are pretty basic, simple skills, but kids don't learn them out of the thin air. Uh, as you said, they watch what we do and uh, we need to give them something worthy to watch. We need to be the kind of people we want them to be. Uh, Dr. Shapiro, you ha are very uh, altruistic and generous, and you've written this workbook for uh, patients and, and for general people who feel they need uh, help with mental health uh, during the pandemic. How can they, uh, how, can, how can people get a hold of this book? And uh, please tell us more about some of the other uh, resources that you are providing for free uh, to, to anyone who needs help with uh, um, a mental anxiety, et cetera, on your website. Sure. Well, well first of all, uh, the book we, we published and, and wrote uh, within about a month of the pandemic and basically looked at, at two problems. One are, are the symptoms that people having that are triggered by the pandemic. You may not, you're lonely, you may uh, be drinking a little more than you should or eating a little more than you should. You may be worried, have intrusive thoughts. So the first part of the book is dealing with those symptoms. And our approach is a skill approach. It's great to talk about it, but we, can, we know there are things you can do every single day that can help you uh, uh, deal with anxiety, deal with depression, uh, deal with loneliness, so it's a very proactive approach. And the second part of the book is about resiliency. Resiliency is something we're all born with, but some of us have it more than others. So what are the things that can help you deal not just with the pandemic, but with any uh, conflict and problem? We are all gonna face them during our lives. Um, and these are things like self-compassion, again, relaxation, taking, uh, getting the, the enough sleep and exercise, as I spoke about. Uh, so there are 20 worksheets, 20 exercises that will help you not just now, but help you into far into the future. Uh, this book 
and other resources as well. You should see on your screen our uh, website we just put up uh, this week, which is uh, pandemicmentalhealthresources.com, and everything's free. You can download the book. Uh, we also have two games that you can download and print out. One is a card game called the Family Dinner Game, uh, which we recommend playing because family dinners are so important at getting kids to talk and listen. And then there's a family meeting board game. You download it, print it out, cut it out, and this is going to help you with family meetings in terms of talking about what bothers you, what other people are doing, what, and again, how you can solve problems. We also have worksheets uh, you can download and resources. There are mental health apps, there are mental health websites, um, and there's real mental health treatment. So we mentioned two uh, nationally known uh, websites. One is Talkspace.com, the other is BetterHelp.com, and these are places where you can get uh, online uh, mental health professionals that can uh, help you with uh, video chat, text or by phone and there's even a site for teenagers as well so uh, there's so many resources out there and we probably uh, can put some more on there but they're they're there for you to, to look at to download and hopefully to address mental health issues Michael you have a comment for yes. Dr. Shapiro, so Dr. Shapiro um, I have two grandchildren age six and age four and about two months ago, the whole conversations for most people is, where am I going to get a haircut? Where am I going to get a haircut? The little <laughs> kids are always watching. My six-year-old grandson and my four-year-old granddaughter decide they were going to take care of it. Mm -hmm. So my grandson cut off almost all my <laughs> granddaughter's hair that was as long as Dr. Prez's uh -huh. and short, and they put all the hair into a box and they gave it to their mother. Yeah. All right? And it was like, great, they solved mm -hmm. this problem. Sometimes we don't think the kids are listening. Oh, they're listening. All right? A lot. And one other thing that happened with me, I uh, t a month, two months ago, I had a pedicurist come over, take care of my feet, my hands. I felt really good and very clean. And my wife got really upset. She locked me out of the house for two days. <laughs> and because that's how she handled the stress. She just didn't know what to do, all right? And so I stayed here. And I tried to lighten it up. I said, well, this is my new bedroom. And I took pictures and videos. And then finally, it, I didn't realize how that was affecting her and certainly how it's affecting us and the staff and the, and the, and the people that, that we know. So my, my question is, what can we do to, f to take the temperature, if you will, of ourselves and of our friends and our families? Uh, well, I think you mean the, the emotional temperature. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. Yes. That's okay, but that, <laughs> that's what I'm clarify. Uh, well, that's easy. We, we, we need to make time uh, to talk. So if, if it's, you know, with the family, again, dinner time is a great time. Uh, to do that, but if it's with a spouse, you need to set aside time. It's so easy to go through the day and just do your own thing and deal with yourself and say hello to the people there but not relate to them. But we know, w you know, whatever the problem is, uh, communication I is usually the answer. And communication, again, in fact, we have a worksheet in the, in the, in the workbook about uh, active listening. It's about letting the other person talk, not interrupting them, uh, asking them about what their feelings are and what their problems are, and then they do the same to you. So active listening is just what it sounds like. It's really listening to what the other person is saying, and it, it's a tremendous feeling. Uh, you know, when we go to a therapist, that's what we do. We, we, we're listened to in, in a deep and understanding way. You could do that at home with your uh, kids, with your teenagers, and of course with the other adults uh, living with you. But it is so difficult, Dr. Shapiro, um, when you're in the thick of it, uh, as uh, Michael has, dis has uh, described with his family, I know that uh, parents that have two or three kids at home, and they are not only responsible now for the education, making sure that the student is, is going to be online and, and, and has all of those uh, tools to be able to get the lessons, etc., but they also have to be worried about feeding the kids, bathing the kids, um, uh, interceding when the kids are uh, having uh, fights or, or just playing, uh, being responsible for the children, and also dealing with the other adults in the home. So it is very difficult, I think, but a very important uh, that people take time out and 
and do as you has, have said to discuss because as it is not, we don't love wearing masks. We don't love having to sanitize every few minutes or every uh, five times at least a day. Uh, we must make the time to communicate. And um, I think one of the other issues, uh, Dr. Shapiro, that is so um, important and that we have received so much um, information about from our teachers, particularly our high school teachers, is the emotional problems that this pandemic has caused for teens. And can you please talk to us about some of the things that parents should be looking at, uh, especially dealing with some of our uh, adolescent students. Absolutely. Let me just address the, the first issue you spoke about as well, which is how hard it is to be a parent uh, these days. Uh, and, you know, to uh, all the stresses that are on parents in, in particular, but all, all of us as well. And, and the, the simple concept is, is self-compassion. You'll hear psychologists talk about that a lot today, which means you need to take care of yourself just like the way you take care of the, the people you love. That means taking some time. And the, you know, the brain doesn't care uh, about what kind of stress it is. You know, the brain doesn't care whether it's the pandemic or whether it's too much noise or whether financial problems. It responds in the same way when you take time to take a, some time uh, by yourself and take a, a, a warm bath or to uh, just take a walk you know, around the, uh, in nature or, or a park or, 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 or get some exercise. So you parents in particular need to take some time each day, don't forget a day because again, brain doesn't care. The brain wants you to do, you know, I, we talk about prevention in mental health, just like prevention with health. You, you, you brush your teeth two or three times a day. You floss every day. You wash your hands all of the time. The, and the same thing is true with mental health. We need to do preventive, regular activities, and that will make the brain feel better responding with these uh, neuropeptides I talked about. Uh, but to get back to your question about teenagers, uh, again, th they're under even more stress so uh, than ever. Uh, so we need to do what we always do with teens, which is to get them talking. Uh, to, again, structure is, is extremely important and to recognize serious symptoms. You know, unfortunately, we have a, a problem with uh, severe depression, anxiety, and suicide. Uh, and this is, you know, we've had this for years, years and years in the teenage population. Uh, so we need to be able to be sensitive to what are the signs that your teenager is really in trouble. You know, they go up to their room, they lock the door, they don't want to talk to anybody. Uh, they look unhappy. Well, you've got to do something about that. That is a sign of serious depression and withdrawal, and that would be the time to consult with a mental health professional to get them help, to get you some help. Uh, don't ignore signs uh, that your teenager is in trouble. You know, w you may look for uh, changes, which are very important, but with teenagers, it can be very gradual, and all of a sudden, they're more moody, uh, they're more withdrawn, uh, they're, uh, you know, seem more upset or spending more time uh, watching uh, shows and TV and not communicating. Y you've got to do something about that. So, you know, that, you know, we all say, well, it's, they're just being a teenager. Well, that's that may be true, but th they also may, may be uh, giving you a call for help and you've got to listen. Dr. Shapiro, and if a parent uh, notices that their their uh, teenager is uh, moody, is in their room, isn't uh, some, I've heard of some that don't want to take showers, uh, et cetera, because they're home all the time. What are some of the hotlines that parents can call if they don't have the resources to call a mental health specialist, if they don't have the uh, privilege of being able to, to contact you? What are some of the things they can do uh, right away that are, it's not very costly? Uh, well, you know, most cities and states and uh, have uh, mental health hotlines. Uh, you can go to, uh, um, in fact, you could email us and we can find you hotlines in your area. Obviously, the National Suicide Prevention Hotline, which is man uh, 24 hours, 365 days a year, I is always available. Uh, but we, but there are many, many hotlines available for parents, uh, both locally and, and nationally. 
and and we're, and if you can't find them, <laughs> uh, go to our website, send us an email, and we'll be happy to give you a list of hotlines in your area. Michael. So um, last fall, uh, Alex Pinellas, the former mayor, uh, came to one of our breakfasts and he spoke about mental health. And his brother was homeless, had a severe mental illness, and eventually killed himself. And Alex has probably uh, told me and groups of people that he wished that he would have done more. And I listened to him when he said to me, you have to be on the lookout. You have to be aware of this. Well, about two months later, I'm looking at some Facebook posting, somebody I know, and she has, does anybody know who I could talk to? And she listed five significant events, depression, postpartum, in case I need to talk to somebody. I called her. And she said she wanted to kill herself. And I'm thinking, that's why I was listening so much. So I made sure that I got the family member, and I said, I want you to tell your, your family member what you just told me. No, I said, you need to tell them. And, they, and she told them, so at least they were able to get care. I'm not sure that before that whether I would have paid any attention. I think, well, it's just some posting. So sometimes when we're looking, you can s get somebody's mood that's, that, that's on there. Or if somebody's doing some writing, you get to see that. Not that we're, that we're shrinks, but we need to be acutely aware of those things so we can help somebody. And I know suicide is a, t a terrible thing. I know four people have killed themselves, not recently, but before. And no, beforehand, the average person, and I knew them, would never have known that they would do that. So one of the things also that's happening is we get so many mixed messages about going back to school. Mm -hmm. Dr. San, uh, Gupta says, my kids are not going back to school and then at all. And then you have the University of Miami and other schools are starting some partial classes. And then you have the online thing. You have Broward County School says, we won't do anything to October. Now they're saying, well, we'll look at it every two weeks. This is confusing at best, right? Mm -hmm. and imagine the, the 10 year old to 18 year old that's looking about, you know, what do, we, what do we need to do? And then we have the food insecurity thing. I've seen those long lines for food, which is devastating for them when I look at that. And it's like, how do these people handle that stress? So maybe you could talk a little bit about how the lack of being in school, where 61% on average of people in Dade County get some food assistance. I know that you're acutely aware of that and how that affects the family unit and, what, and how to be able to talk about that. Uh, well, well, again, I think we have to appreciate uh, on the one hand, we need to, as you said, uh, understand what the symptoms are, what the calls uh, for help are. We also need to appreciate resiliency, that, that kids in particular are very resilient. If you say, you know, they, they may not like it, the fact that they can't see their friends or they can't go to class, uh, they, but, you know, they, they can deal with that. There, there was an interesting study in resiliency back uh, in World War II during the London bombings. And, and imagine you're in London, you've got airplanes flying overhead, dropping bombs on that could hit your house, there's rubble in the streets. And th what they found when they studied the mental health of these kids, they really did pretty well. Uh, kids are very, very resilient, and, and most adults are very resilient. So yes, there's, there's going to be problems, financial problems, uh, marital stress, food problems, school problems. We can handle these things. Uh, if you you know look at the basic mental health uh, issues again communication structure uh, support uh, compassion for others compassion for yourself you know when we look at that particular study the only time that these kids really fell apart was when the parents weren't there and the, and they weren't they were removed maybe they were killed or maybe they were had to go to fight or uh, or they were emotionally not there so parents need us to be present uh, both physically and emotionally and most uh, kids will then do uh, pretty well uh, again following uh, the basic mental health rules thank uh, dr. Shapiro um, my, uh, Michael mentioned that he helped a lady who was about to commit suicide and that, uh, that's heroic I think uh, he saved someone's life as as have you in so many instances because uh, one of the things that the audience uh, I, I would like to share is that among his many accomplishments, Dr. Shapiro has uh, written an award-winning app on suicide prevention for our military personnel. And 
Um, so this is something that, although it sounds perhaps uh, very uh, unfamiliar, it is something that so often uh, does touch our lives. And Michael, I was saying what a hero you were to have helped the, uh, this person. Uh, you saved her life. And, and, and uh, as Dr. Shapiro has also done through so many of his books and apps and, and all kinds of, of other things. And another thing that Dr. Shapiro uh, has written a great deal about is high EQ. And I would like for you, please, to explain what that is, because we all want our children to have high IQs, but it, you say that high EQ is, if not a little more important. Would you tell us about that, please? Uh, yeah, I'd be glad to. But let, let me also just address for a minute the, uh, uh, the, the pro very serious problem of, of suicide and suicide prevention. And I mentioned the National Suicide Hotline. I, it's not just for people who are thinking about suicide. It's for people mm -hmm. concerned about people who are uh, thinking about suicide. So if you know someone, if you're worried about someone, call the hotline. Th they will give you the support and the resources you need to help the people <laughs> you're worried about. Uh, but back to the emotional intelligence question, uh, that's something we've been uh, looking at since the early 1990s, which is uh, the fact that when we use these mental health issues uh, and address these mental health issues, uh, even beyond a problem, we teach social skills, we teach communication skills, problem-solving mm -hmm. skills, optimism, positive thinking. That's what EQ is. So it's great to be uh, you know, a science major or a great in geometry or algebra or numbers or whatever it is. What the studies tell us is that our emotional intelligence in ourselves and particularly in our kids that is the recipe for success. So you have very, very bright people that don't seem to do so well in life, but those who have emotional intelligence, they do incredibly well in terms of uh, work success, school success, relationships, and even physical health. So paying attention to emotions, as I said early, uh, is really the job for all of us, for ourselves and certainly for our kids. Do Dr. Shapiro, th th your information is so important. I do hope that you will come back and join us again. And before we go, uh, I'd like, we have a few minutes left. Uh, I'd like to hear a little bit about you, Dr. Shapiro, the man. How did you get started in this field and how did you become so prolific in helping others? Well, uh, you know, I think uh, like a lot of uh, people in the mental health field, uh, you, you know, early in life, you, you want to help people. Uh, and for, for me, uh, I, I didn't want to just be in private practice. You know, I felt, well, I can re reach a couple thousand people. Uh, I wanted to do something on a bigger scale. So that's when I started writing uh, and, and working and inventing games for kids. And I've been very fortunate that mm -hmm. they've been translated. We've got uh, games that have been in, in played in Bosnia and South Africa and China. Uh, games are a particularly great way to play with kids because they don't know they're uh, being helped with their problems. They're just playing a, a game. Um, but, th you know, the, it, it, the thing is, it, for me, is to make things practical. Uh, psychology, mental health, it, it's not that difficult. It's very, <laughs> very basic things. And, and what I've tried to do is to find practical ways uh, to help people and pr particularly... Uh, interactive uh, workbooks, uh, software, apps, and now with everyone have we have a, a, a smartphone, everyone in their pocket or on the bedside, uh, there's so much technology that's out there. And again, if you go to our website, we talk about some apps that can help you literally, Happify is one that, that just does what it says, helps you find better ways to be uh, happy. Uh, Headspace is an app for mindfulness. Uh, there's a, a, a link to uh, apps on the uh, Depression and Anxiety uh, Association website, which has a very specific uh, apps. They're all free, by the way. Uh, so there, there's so much uh, interactive material that's out there, and that's something that's always interested me, and uh, I think is, it's great that it's available to the public as well. So it's not just going to the therapist once a week and talking for an hour. There are many, many ways that you can help yourself and, and help the people you love. 
um, before we go, uh, and, and I think Michael has some things to say, I just want to mention, I just looked up at the comments that we're receiving, uh, and the last one says, excellent interview, communication is the key to any success. And uh, so congratulations, Dr. Shapiro. So, Dr. Shapiro, one of the things that, that we recognize is some people still feel that there's a stigma to this mental health issues. I hope at the minimum what happens is that people recognize that it's part of what we do, part of who we are, and we're affected by each thing. And, it's, and when we're happy, that's a positive mental state. So when sad things happen, sometimes the other part happens to that. And I think I hope what happens is people will feel a little bit more comfortable in talking about this. Is when people like yourself make this open to everybody. We're so delighted that you you've shared uh, your uh, almost 100 books that you've done and work programs either directly for the children or with their parents or with uh, with uh, mental health providers. We're delighted that you do that. We're happy that we've been able to help spread your word. All right, and folks, let me tell you something. You, where am I? I think I'm over. It. You're going to get over it. This thing is going to be solved. We've been through it before. And if you remember Hurricane Andrew, it was terrible trauma. And then when we got our heads back on, we were able to move forward. Hopefully in the next few months, we're going to have some really good news. I hope that you come back, Dr. Shapiro. It's been our pleasure to do this and to share your good work. Well, thank you for give, giving me the opportunity. I love being here. Thank and you. And Dr. Marta Perez, thank you very much. And again, if you need some help, you can go to pandemicmentalhealthresources.com. They will direct you to some local resources. Or you can go online. There's a suicide hot, hot, a suicide watch line uh national suicide Not, prevention line and and please 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 if you need help please reach out and folks take good care of yourself and again I want to thank the two of you for being here and again this is live with Miami community news i do want to thank oscar and aaron uh, for producing the show folks that's it for today have a good one <laughs>